Hi there, and welcome to the latest edition of Who's Zoom and Who. We're presented by Team Monarch Parker of the Virginia Lottery. I'm Ted Alexander, and today we're talking ODU women's soccer with head coach Angie Hind. Coach, good to see you. Thank you, Ted. Good morning. You well? I'm doing well. And my question for you, Coach, is that in these unique times, how are you doing? Yeah, we're good. We're, um, the team are all together. They're all healthy. They're working hard. Um, and we're really enjoying the, the opportunity to do just that, to get better together. How important is it during these unique times to have the relationships with your players that you forge when you start recruiting them? Yeah, because through the, the end of the spring and the summer, you know, it was challenging because you're only seeing them through a screen. Um, and we can do all the fun things we like, but the, the physical interaction and the ability to, to just be around each other is, is huge. And nothing can replace that. So, um, so it's, been, it's been great to be back on the practice field. And um, we just had a great session this morning, really probably... Our best so far this fall, and you can really see them beginning to come together just by being around each other more and more now. Do you believe there's a heightened sense of appreciation from everybody involved? Yes, absolutely. And, and that's even from me, you know. Um, there, there's no doubt we're, we're, all, we're all passionate about certain things, and, and these young women are passionate about um, being on the field and playing, getting to play the sport that they love. And... And we've got creative and managed to find ways to, to try and um, keep them challenged. You know, we, we do an inter-squad scrimmage once a week and we make that as, as big time as we can. You know, we have a Champions League board. They, they will suit up in uniform, blue or white. Um, and obviously it's just for us, it's enclosed. But, but they're taking it for real because they want to be better. They're passionate about the sport that they love to play. And they absolutely appreciate every moment now. And, and, and that might not have been the case earlier, you know, in the spring when it's like, it'll be okay. We'll be back and we'll be playing. And now we've all came through this together and we've realized just how serious it is. And, and now they do absolutely appreciate that. And, and it's a very, a very poignant point that you raise because that's exactly how they feel. As a leader of these women, how could you tell them that it's not okay, but it's going to be okay, but it's not okay. And it's okay. <laughs> yeah, that's clear as mud right there, that question. Um, which is kind of what we've been waiting in for a few months here. No, I think that we, we right away at the very start did the old school SWOT analysis and says, you know, what do we have? What do we have? What don't we have? What could we have? And what do we need to protect ourselves against? And and I think that was an afternoon well spent because we still go back to that meeting. Um, and I think the, the key thing really is that, that they just want to use the opportunity to get better. And they just want to protect themselves from getting that taken away from them, you know. Um, and so I think it's been, it's been a real learning curve for, for all of us. And, and I think just trying to reiterate that every day. But we really don't have to do that anymore because they're – they're all on board. I mean, really, I'm, I'm super proud of them right now because as adults, we don't know how to deal with this. So you can imagine being 20 again. I know it's a little while ago for you and I, but you can imagine. And, and, and they just want to do all the things that 20-year-olds do. And, and now they've figured it out and said, well, soccer is important to me, so I'm not going to put anyone in jeopardy. Um, I'm going to do the right things. Your squad has made some some headlines in the last couple of weeks. Edgy Turkoglu has been named to the Turkish national team. What a nice honor. Describe how big a deal that is, Coach. Yeah, and, and sometimes I think, you, you know, and the structure is different for everyone. You know, in European soccer is, is very different. But um, even if you're an athlete here, the pinnacle of your career is, is playing for your national team. Um, when you're a smaller nation sometimes and, and nations like Turkey maybe don't always get the, the, the draw or highlighted as much, when you're chosen to represent your country and have the opportunity to make a difference and bring something special to your nation, it, it really is very, very special. And there's nothing better than standing there alongside 10 other players, you know, being one of the best 11 players in your whole country and singing your national anthem. So, um, we're really proud of her. She's a, she's a very, she's special, you know, and I think you know that as well. She's, 
she's probably one of the key players in Turkey as well. And she actually was um, selected even at 17 years old for her national team, the full women's team. So that will give you an indication just how good she is. Um, and they're excited about her. They have a new head coach in. And, and any time we bring in a youth national team player, we make that promise. We want you to be here and make us better. And in turn, we're going to make you better so that you can go and represent your country. So um, she's excited. She's a, a, a really humble kid. Um, so it, it's, a great, it's a great accolade for her. And it's three very important games she'll go and play in. There are also some former monarchs uh, making some headlines at the next level, realizing that dream, be it Catherine or Eris or, or, or Deidre. Talk about those that are, that are still chasing that little ball. Yeah, and it's great because so they should. I chased it till I shouldn't have been chasing it, you know. Um, <laughs> so it, it's really, it makes me happy because we, we can work, you know. These, these kids are smart. They have careers. Um, and they've chosen to keep playing whilst also um, building their – I guess their academic portfolio and also getting good jobs. So Catherine Hill is now a teacher and, and she's still playing um, for Durham, you know, which is fantastic and just recently got the accolade of player of the year. So that will tell you just an impact that she's making. And that doesn't surprise me because Kathy makes ripples wherever she goes. Um, and then Iris, of course, decided to go there and, and continue her education in the same place. So it's really nice. And then Dee, unfortunately, tore her ACL again just – um, you know, last year and now she's back fit and she's went over there as well. So three players to be playing at the highest level in England is, is a pretty big deal. Um, so we're in touch with them. We talk to them often um, and we're super proud of them. How important is it for the current team to recognize the success both in the classroom and on the professional playing field that the alumni have? Yeah, absolutely. And, and that's something that you always want our kids to look at. Look at the players when they're seniors here and say, I aspire to be like her. And then when they graduate, they continue to inspire the, the current players. And they see that and they're in touch. And social media is a great vehicle for that, Ted. So they get the chance to do that. And I mean, last year, Natalie Johnson and Kira Lorento went and had a little taste of it as well, um, playing in Sweden. Um, and also Finland. So it's great. And I know it keeps our current guys hungry. And it's, it's interesting because more and more of them come in and say, hey, coach, do you, do you think I could play pro? Absolutely. Let's go make it happen, you know. So um, uh, it's great. And the women's game is growing at a tremendous rate worldwide. And the opportunities are growing with that. So um, I think it's awesome. I think it's great. don't know if the parents feel the same. But uh, I'm like, yeah, go play for a year, you know? Well, the experience, I think, more in, in, in many cases off the, the pitch than on, those experiences will last a lifetime in a positive way, don't you think? Yeah, absolutely. And, and Kira, for example, went and played in Finland and stayed with a family. And she wanted to do that because she said, I want to get the real benefit of um, the culture and seeing the country and and I actually did that as well as a young student I went to Norway and did the same thing and and you get so much more out of it than going and staying in your own apartment and trying to find your own way and um, so you're right it's it's such an experience for them and it can be life-changing in many ways if I didn't go to Norway I probably wouldn't have been brave enough to come to the states that's how big an impact it made you mentioned that sort of the international flavor of your program uh, starts with you. During this pandemic, we've all learned that perhaps the world is a smaller place than even we ever thought. Do you find that to be the case as well? And your perspective, is it easier to help those that have come from a long way to Old Dominion to deal with this? Yeah, absolutely. And, and you know, we spoke a lot to them and, and made sure they're okay and it's funny, it's a small world, but sometimes it feels like a huge world when you're away from your family. Um, and I think Michelle and I, being internationals, also have a real appreciation for that. And I think we've helped, um, you know, the, the more local players appreciate that as well because they've kind of embraced that and taken people in their wing and, and looked after them. And I think that's part of building a team. You know, a lot of people talk about culture and family but really, this is a time when you get to truly see how close your team can be in helping to take care of each other. So you're right. It's, it's, I love bringing in international players because I think 
our program benefits from their soccer culture and also they bring a different culture and a different kind of understanding and appreciation for us. But I also think likewise, I feel that those internationals come here and after four years, they learn a lot from American players. They learn so much from here and then they go back and can spread that, you know, in amongst their country and in amongst their leagues because US players have a, a real mentality to win, you know, a competitive edge, a hard work, committed. And, and I think that's a, a real value that you don't always get in, in Europe. This uh, pandemic has provided a lot of off the pitch opportunities for you. you. You put any additions on the house, you learn how to bake, what, what, working in the kitchen. What, what, what have, what's been going on off the pitch? Right, now here we go for a while. Um, <laughs> So we, I love to cook. I love food. So um, I'm fortunate to come from a family where my mom is the best cook ever. So um, yeah, I make scones once a week and I take them around to the neighbours. So that's been a kind of daily routine, a weekly routine rather. Um, we actually have had a, a Zoom call with the team where we've been baking together, which has been nice. And Sam, our other coach, will tell you his looked a little bit different from everyone else's. But they still tasted great. Um, yeah, I mean, not so much, well, a little bit around the house, I guess, because um, I, I just love to be busy. And it's that, I guess that's been a challenging thing when you're a little bit, your hands are tied a little bit. Um, so, yeah, I mean, food, I'm always a foodie, but it's been nice as well. I live in a kind of community here in East Beach and, and getting to know the neighbours has been fun, you know, because everyone's walking the dog. All of a sudden, we went from having 10 dogs in the neighborhood to like 50. So everyone is known by the dogs. Um, so, yeah, I mean, I've managed to do some different things, which is nice. And we're in a fantastic area to do that as well. What's the key ingredient or procedure to keep a scone from looking like a brick and feeling like a brick? Yeah, you don't over need the dough. You got to just put it in there, mix it up. As soon as you can form it, bang, it goes in the oven. You can't. It's not Play-Doh. You can't roll about with it. You've got to keep it just gentle. Don't overneed the dough. <laughs> Coach Angie Hind, great to catch up with you once again. Best of luck to you and your squad as you do your thing, and uh, we appreciate you joining us today. Thank you, Ted. It's always a pleasure. Angie Hind, women's soccer coach at Old Dominion University, joining us for this edition of Who's Zooming Who, presented by Team Monarch Partner of the Virginia Lottery.